All right, folks, welcome back to another budget gem or budget bust. Um, got another one here for you. And I've got today a Power Acoustic Razor RZ1-2300D. Um, the reason I picked the Power Acoustic this time is, well, well, a couple of reasons. First, you have an amplifier here that states it does 1400 watts RMS at 2 ohms and costs a whopping $84 at Walmart. And I was like, wow, if it's true, this thing is the biggest steal ever. However, um, my last video with a power acoustic, they didn't do so well. So I thought I would give power acoustic another chance. A lot of you out there wanted me to give them another chance because believe it or not, my power acoustic BAMF 3000D video is my most hated video. I've had the most dislikes um, on any of my videos was on that BMAF one. Um, and a lot of people out there said I was full of shit. So, let's give it another shot, okay? So, this one here, again, this is a Class D monoblock, uh, rated at 2300 watts max, um, 900 watts RMS at 4 ohms, and 1400 watts by one at 2 ohms. So let's unbox the amplifier and let's see what do you get for $85. Um, all right, I'll give it credit. Nicely packaged. Got a nice little cardboard piece over it. You have your Power Acoustic Razor owner's manual. Ooh, with some high input adapters. We, is that it? Nope, nope, not it. Got an amplifier here that's pretty small and compact. Uh, this reminds me in size of the Precision Power Ion series. Um, I'll do some investigating before the end of the video and see how closely related these are. You have your remote base cable and your remote base knob. And this is just like most other um, remote base knobs that you're going to get from Epsilon. This is uh, full-on plastic very very cheap there are some stainless steel mounting screws so bonus there and that is it for what comes in the box Let's take a look at the amplifier itself pull it out it's got a nice actually it's, it doesn't feel bad in your hands the um, the BAMF felt felt cheap the whole time uh, this one, this one doesn't, you know, it, it feels pretty good. And this amplifier is actually made, I don't know if you can see that right there or not. It's made in Korea. So this is not a Chinese amplifier. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show you the guts because again, yeah, I got the, the little sticker there. And, um, I'm not going to be keeping this amplifier, so I don't want to wreck the warranty for someone else in the future that might actually keep this amp. So we're gonna take a walk around the amplifier and see how it looks on the input side. Okay, along this side of the amplifier, you're gonna find your power and ground terminals as well as your speaker outputs. So along here, this right there, I know it's very tough to read, but this is actually here, your power input. Over here is your ground. <laughs> gigantic size opening is for your remote uh, cable um, these are not 4 gauge they're listed in the manual as 4 gauge but they're not um, you might be able to get 4 gauge wiring in there so let me clarify you might be able to make this work but I have a 4 gauge reducer in hand and it does not fit in now it gets through the first um, plastic part here but there's a metal ring in there that prevents a reducer of four gauge and size of getting in. So you're gonna need um, probably six or eight gauge to really go in there, which might be fine because the fusing on this amplifier is only 50 amps. So let's just throw it out there. 1400 watts is likely not going to happen with this amp. Um, you have eight gauge speaker outputs over here. So that's nicely sized. And of course, these do take Phillips head screwdriver 
the ground and uh, power terminals and the speaker outputs. So that's pretty easy, you don't have to worry about finding the right Allen key. Okay, let me apologize in advance. I know this is a little dark here, but these end caps really block um, the different settings over on this side of the amp. Um, up in here, you can't see it, but your high low, where your high input adapter is there. You have your RCA inputs. There are no RCA outputs. Um, you have your connection right over here for your gain. Right there is your subsonic filter, your bass boost, which will give you anywhere from 0 to 12 dBs at 45 hertz. Again, I don't recommend using that. And your low pass filter is here, and your remote bass cable connects right there. All right, nothing left to do but to strap this amp up on the amp dyno and find out for $85, do you really get 1400 watts RMS at 2 ohms out of this tiny Korean made amplifier? Let's find out. Okay folks, final thoughts here on the Power Acoustic Razor RZ12300D. Now, it is obviously a budget bust because we got nowhere even close to the ratings that's on the box. Now, is it the fault of the manufacturer or is it the fault of Epsilon and Power Acoustic? Because I mean, let's, I'm gonna kill the mystery here. Power Acoustic themselves does not own an assembly plant where this was made. Um, this is kind of a rebadge catalog job that Epsilon bought. They bought it for Precision Power. I think they even bought it for Soundstream. I think these might be Picasso Nanos. Um, this in the Precision Power. This exact amplifier is a PPI I650, the Ion 650. So that amplifier is rated accurately. So, Power Acoustic knew it wasn't accurately rating this because they rated the precision power accurately. They did not with Power Acoustic. So, if you're in the market for precision power ION and you want to save some money, the ION is rate is cost $110. This is $85. So, if you want one of those amplifiers, get this one. Save yourself some money. Again, you can go to Walmart, you can pick up a three-year warranty on this thing for like 20 bucks. Knock yourself out. So then you get a three-year warranty, you get the same amp as a Prism Power Ion, and you save some go. But I can't recommend this amp because of the ratings. So I'm kind of disappointed. I got my first bust here in a while. There are some positives, though. Again, beyond the Precision Power aspect, it's actually fairly efficient for an amplifier, and it doesn't sound bad. So, if you own one, don't get embarrassed because of my review. 
And if you're looking for a 650 watt amplifier and you have less than 100 bucks to spend, don't be afraid to look at this. It's just realize that everything on here is complete bullshit. So don't worry about the box. It's worthless. The ratings in there, pure trash. But what's in here, not so bad. So, all right, folks. Well, that's that's all I got about this amp. Um, Till next time, I got a lot more amps to test, and uh, I'll see you next time.